What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. I got a question for all the basketball fanatics. Has LeBron James' tenure as a Los Angeles Laker been a success? Has LeBron James' tenure as a Laker been successful overall? Now, this is a nuanced answer a little bit. But overall, the, the, the answer to the question is yes. It has been a success. Why is that? Well, the Lakers got a championship out of the ordeal, right? Any team, when they win a championship, it's a success. I don't care what organization it is. There's a lot of teams across the league that have never sniffed the championship. And even, even if they have sniffed a championship before, they haven't gotten, they haven't gotten close to one in years. They are vying for one. They need one to showcase in, in their trophy case. They need something to be happy about. They need something to be galvanized with each other about. They need something to be celebrating, right? And the Lakers got their chip after they hadn't won a chip since the 2009-2010 season. That was, I believe, yeah, that was the last time. That was the year the Lakers won. They went back to back. They won in 08-09, and then they won in 09-010. They beat Orlando, and then they beat the Boston, the Boston Celtics. Right. And so after pretty much after that, I think the last time they made the playoffs was in 2013. After that, the Lakers were terrible. They were a terrible franchise. And, you know, you know how I know they were terrible. They kept getting lottery picks year after year after year from 2014 on. They kept getting first round lottery picks. Number one pick, number two pick, number two pick, number one. They kept getting the top picks because they were so bad. They had, a, like, I promise y'all, the product they were sending out there on the court with Kobe, with Kobe Bryant at the end of his career, Robert Sacre, Jordan Hill. Jordan Hill wasn't completely trash, but, you know, it was just a lot of dudes that Robert Sacre, now, come on now. Carlos Boozer after his last years with the, uh, with the Chicago Bulls. You had, I mean, just any old body out there, Swaggy P now. It was just looking crazy out there. And Tinseltown was not looking beautiful. It was not, it, bro, it was looking shaky for the organization. LeBron James comes to the organization. He brings relevance back to the Lakers. And I know a lot of people, it's a lot of lifelong Laker fans that follow me. And I'm here to tell you all this. As great as the history of the Los Angeles Lakers have been, has been, the Lakers lore died a long time ago. All that Lakers lore and all of that, oh my God, we the Lakers, the mystique of the franchise and all of that, like that was not garnering free agents. They hadn't garnered a top free agent since what? And Paul Gasol wasn't a free agent. They traded for him. Shaq was the last time they got a prominent free agent over there. Seriously, nobody was going to L.A. to play. Like Greg Monroe, a big man who isn't great, right? They, but they were vying for him. They were courting him. Greg Monroe said, nah, I'll pass on the Lakers and went to Milwaukee. Because in today's NBA, who you play for does not matter. The city you play for, it really does not, it, it doesn't mean the same thing anymore with social media. You can increase your brand anywhere you go. You can play in Oklahoma City. You can play in um, Memphis. You can play in, I don't know if, 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 if Louisville, Kentucky had a team, you can play there. If, if Idaho had a team or Wyoming or Nebraska, you would still be able to be popping because you can sell yourself on social media. So the Lakers Lord died a long time ago. They could not get free agents in there. LeBron James come in, comes there. He brings Anthony Davis to the organization. Anthony Davis would not be an L.A. Laker if it was not for LeBron James. I'm here to tell you all that. Seriously, he would not, and y'all know that, right? And for what it's worth. Now, y'all can clown AD and say, you know, hey, he been hurt most of the time. You can call him street clothes. You can call him Mr. Glass all you want to. But he was a, like I'm telling you, he was a key component. A key component in the Lakers winning that championship that they won in the bubble, right? So, um, people will say this, right? They'll try to, first of all, the championship they won in the bubble was big because it tied the LA Lakers franchise with the Boston Celtics franchise for the most championships in NBA history, in NBA history at all, all, all together. Um, the Lakers care about being, being the dominant franchise overall. So they want to have more championships than anybody. LeBron winning one chip gets them a step, a step closer by tying with the Boston Celtics. Um, people criticize the bubble championship and they shit on it. They belittle it. But I always tell y'all, if LeBron James is not the guy who wins the bubble championship, everybody else is at peace. Everybody accepts it. Everybody um, um, celebrates that person who won. It's only because dude won the chip. When LeBron won, a lot of people was pissed off. 
They hated it because they didn't want him to get any more any more rings. They thought his time was over. They thought that shit wasn't going to work in L.A. with them winning the chip. And when he won it, they were salty. They was mad. They were bitter. They were upset. They didn't want him to try to go and string off some more championships. They wanted Cleveland to be the end of his championship run. So they shitted on the championship and acted, and acted like it was an asterisk next to the chip. Called it a Mickey Mouse championship. All of that, right? But it's crazy to me, man. Um... Because a lot of other teams would have imploded. The Brooklyn Nets in particular with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. They would have self-imploded in that format. Right? And again, it's crazy, that, it's crazy that the Lakers get criticized for winning the title in the bubble more than the Clippers, more than the Clippers in the Heat, etc. get for losing in the bubble. The Clippers, law, the Clippers were predicted to probably go to the finals. People were thinking that the Clippers were going to upstage the Lakers and win. They lost against Denver. People clown up for a few, about a month and a half, and everybody forget about it. Nobody says anything about it, all of that. All is forgiven. But had the Clippers won, if Kawhi Leonard and Paul George won, people would be celebrating how they were the new kings of L.A., and at least they got a championship. At least they got one. LeBron ain't got one yet. If LeBron would have never won in L.A. yet, they would clown him about how Kawhi is the real king because he got a chip. They wouldn't downplay the chip. It's because dude got it. When dude get the chip, this shit is no fun no more. Now the chip don't mean nothing. Now it's minuscule. Now you can poo-poo at it. Oh, it. It's crazy to me, man. Because listen, any team would have wanted to win that chip. How do you think teams like the uh, the New York Knicks, the Denver Nuggets, the Pistons, OKC, hell, even the Clippers who ain't even been, they ain't even been to a conference finals before. The Clippers ain't even been to the conference finals, right? They ain't even been to the, they ain't been to the NBA finals, none of that shit. Right, 85% of the teams in a league would be just elated about getting a chip itself. Especially during the years that an all-time great, a pantheon great like LeBron James. Like you, you have a pantheon great playing for your franchise, y'all win a chip. Now, it, the chip don't mean nothing. The chip ain't nothing. Winning a ring is always, always a success for any team. In the discussion, right? Um... You know, when somebody refers to the 2020 championship as the bubble ring or the Mickey Mouse ring, what they really mean is my team in particular couldn't boss up under those conditions and get the job done. So I'm going to minimize the championship altogether because my team didn't have what it takes. They didn't have the mental fortitude. They didn't have the mental toughness to, to pull it out, to pull it off and get the dub and get the win. So now we're going to minimize the championship. Crazy to me. This shit is it, 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 crazy to me, man. Seriously. And what's, what's, what was even more crazier is that I saw Lakers fans. Like, oh, this shit don't mean nothing. This just a list. It's a bubble championship. Are y'all, are you serious? I don't care what nobody say. Every Lakers fan better be grateful. Because the Lakers won on shit. Shit before LeBron got there. Y'all know that. Lakers was looking crazy. Kobe last few years in L.A. were horrible. Horrid. The team was looking like they had no direction. No, I mean, nothing was going on. The team just was just drafting dudes and praying for the best, wishing for, wishing for the best. What do the BMF theme say? Wish me luck. That's what Genie Bus was saying. Wish us luck, y'all. We just, God damn it, we winging this shit. It, uh, Rob Palenka and them was out there winging it, just wondering what the hell could happen. Magic Johnson come in and bring LeBron to the organization, right? Now, I will say this, and I'll put this in perspective. Yes. LeBron James has done the least for the Lakers than any other Lakers great. LeBron has done the least. He's done less than Kobe. He's done less than Shaq. He's done less than Kareem. He's done less than, less than Magic. But we got to put a lot of things in perspective. LeBron James came to the LA Lakers when he was going on 34 years old, right? His, like, his peak, peak years, he had some good years left of basketball, but his best years were not. He wasn't in his prime. He was going. He was exiting his prime. He was still a little bit in it, though. He was still a little. He was still a little bit in it. But he was slowly starting to exit when he came to the Lakers. The last time Kobe Bryant made the playoffs as an LA Laker, Kobe was about thirty-three years old. He was thirty-three when uh, when Kobe when Kobe last last made the playoffs. What 2012, 2013? He was thirty-three years old. LeBron came in. He was thirty-three, going on thirty-four. So LeBron missed the playoffs the first year. He made the playoffs the second year, won the chip, made the playoffs the second year, and his star guy got hurt. So we got to consider some things, several things. LeBron was 33 going on 34. And then the guy that joined him 
that he got to join him to help win the chip, he's been injury prone. So they have not been, they, they couldn't repeat. They really have, have not been able to contend in a proper way. Now, people will say, ain't LeBron and James an all-time great? Y'all say he the king. Why can't he, why can't he get it done? And I say the reason why is because, when, as, I just, as I just mentioned, LeBron was slowly exiting his prime when he got to the Lakers. And I could see it because even though he was putting up great numbers, his scoring did not affect winning in the same way. When LeBron was with the Cleveland Cavaliers in the Miami Heat, LeBron scored 40, 38, 39. Unless the team turns the ball over a lot and nobody just nobody shows up, they're going to win most of the nights. LeBron was having great performances. Things were not going their way. They could not win. LeBron was getting older. Defense, he couldn't exert the same amount of energy on defense as offense. So he, you can see he was leaving his prime. His, his scoring did not affect winning. And so when your scoring does not affect winning in the same way it used to, especially when LeBron was younger, bro, go on, drop, you can drop him off at any team. He's going to get them about, about 50 wins. If, especially if you got another guy to help him score a little bit, he going to get him 50 to, uh, to 50, 53 to 61 wins at, at, around that range. Right? In his younger years, in his youth, he was a dog. Even in that last year in Cleveland, Kevin Love was averaging, what, 17 a game, six rebounds. Kevin Love was the second lead scorer on the Cleveland Cavaliers team, averaging 17 a game. Brown was being a dog, got them boys to the finals. Yeah, they won seven games with the Pacers, the Boston Celtics. You know, they had their battles with Toronto and all that. But at that point, LeBron was top dog. It was games where LeBron was having 40-something. Cal Corver was the second lead scorer on the team, not Kevin Love at times. Right. So as he got old again, but so as LeBron left the Cleveland Cavaliers and came to the L.A. Lakers, you could see him stepping out of his prime a little bit. He was still in it a little bit, still in it, still in it a little bit, though. Oh, uh, could not make the playoffs with the team. Got his dude. AD got kept getting hurt. They won a chip. He could not bring it home. At this point in LeBron James career, he needs another guy with him to help him make runs, to help him get wins. He can't get win solely himself anymore. He can't do it like that anymore. Not solely himself, but you know what I mean. He can't score a bulk of the points and they just win now. He's gotten older. He's 38. He cannot do it at that same clip anymore in that same rate. He can score points. He can have great moments. He can have great, fantastic plays that help bring energy and life into the team. He can make game-altering plays still. He just can't be able to dictate the pace of a game and... His scoring affecting the win column day in and day out. You know? So that's why I would say that you got to consider that when you say he has a, he's done less than any other Lakers legend. Any other Lakers player who's been legendary. Shaq came. He was much younger than LeBron when he came to the Lakers. Magic, of course, drafted into the organization. Kobe drafted into the organization. And the last time Kobe won a chip, he was 31 years old. LeBron won a chip at 35. Kobe last chip, he was 31. You could say it was because of injuries or whatever and all this and all that. But even when Kobe wasn't injured at times, well, at the end of the career, he wasn't he wasn't looking like LeBron was looking at 38. It was not even close. He was shooting like 37, 36%, which is atrocious in that last year. Abysmal. Abysmal. Horrible. When he was averaging 17 a game at 38. Um, but then you could talk about Kareem. Kareem was older. However, he had a young gun, Magic Johnson, with him. A young Magic Johnson, James Worthy, you know, had these individuals, Byron Scott and them, with, he had these individuals over there with him, rolling with him. So Kareem wasn't the 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 um the end all be all for the Lakers at that point. He had young guys and his guys were his guys were healthy. His guys were healthy to play with him where he didn't have to average 27, 26, 28. He didn't have to average that for them to win. So we got to put those into perspective. But overall, yes, the LeBron James Lakers tenure has been successful because they won a chip. Um, and they've been way more relevant than they ever would be. And at the end of the day, even though, you know, they'll say the Lakers, we're about championships here. Like I said, they hadn't won a championship since 2010. No free agent was coming over there. LeBron James helped the Lakers organization get a chip. And, um, hey, they, that's the more. That's the most they've went. That's the most success they've had in years. 
hadn't made the, the playoffs. And they was like, they would hadn't they missed the playoffs in the last six, seven years. Out there marching out Robert Sacre and them. Hell, hell the fuck no. Just trash dudes out there out there playing with them. Like, what the, what is going on? Like, I don't know. I have no idea. It was just looking crazy. When nonetheless, even though they're the Lakers and they say they used to win and they hadn't won nothing in a long, 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 long ass time, Greg Monroe skipped out on them for the Milwaukee Bucks. No disrespect to Milwaukee, but we know it's not L.A. So, yeah, man, um, LeBron got him a chip. And now we'll see if they can make another run at it with this switch up that they had. They these uh these trade these moves they made at the trade at the trade deadline. Let's see if they can make another run at it and be a dark horse for a chip. We shall see. It all depends on health. It depends on the play of LeBron James. It depends on the play of uh Anthony Davis and his health as well. But it's been successful for sure. They got a chip. Out oh, goddamn. Anybody want a chip? I know my Chicago Bulls. I'm waiting for the day they win a chip. Being honest with you, I I don't even remember the Jordan years. I was born in 93. The last time I remember Michael Jordan really playing live was 98. And I really didn't know what I was watching for real. Took it for granted. Machiavelli Mills TV. I'm out. Peace.